Hey, welcome everyone to WBHL week number two. So here we have the standing from uh, the week one. So uh, here's the current ranking uh, with the points of the player. So let's start already with the analysis for the comp number one. So the first battle of tonight will be Kisan against GB79. Uh, so for Kisan, I have a Knight's turn, Rain and Shuzult. I think that GB will be wary of Vega and Shuzult for the Rain. Uh, also, uh, there's no physical tank to be wary on GB's side. And also, I think that uh, Mariel can overpower Jaden. It will be uh, too much of a threat if uh, he brings her. Also, uh, I think that uh, Kison will uh, bank on uh, AoE resistance uh, to win this one. On GB's side, we have uh, Jaden, Cherries, and Mariel. I think that he, it's an obvious choice because there's no ice threat on the Kison side. And also, the, the map is very favorable for Missile. So let's see if I'm right. So, uh, Chizu, uh, what uh, can we expect from this fight? So just like you said, we have a missile coming out from JB79, but we also have missile coming out from Kason. Uh, we got Summer Jaden from JB, and then regular Jaden or OG Jaden over here from Kason. Uh, so it looks like they both have strong frontline tanks with Marielle and Rain, and I think it's definitely going to be decided by whose tank will go down first or making sure that that tank can draw that hate. So, um, And not to completely diminish Revelka over here, we have Revelka as kind of a more uh, closer range unit. So she might be able to help in the damage, uh, but she also might get in the line of fire. So let's see what goes on here. Uh, right now I'm seeing a lot of agility buffs coming out from uh, JB79. So that team's getting nice and hasty. We saw a keen blade also come out. So lots of early buffs coming on here. And then there's the early haste coming out from uh, uh, Kason's Jaden as well. So we have two very hasty teams. Uh, and here comes the first damage. That's a lot of tanking. Yeah, she's taking really low damage. So we have Jaden, Bravery down on it. I wonder why this one was preferred to another. Well, GB knows what he's doing. So we have a Cherry's LB. Uh, who did she aim? Okay, that's an AoE on the both. Uh, uh, really little damage, so little ca Oh boy! So we have Jaden, first big damage on Mariel. So what is. What can. Ah, no, okay, there's a reflex. So <laughs> oh! But then she hit the Revelka, so Revelka is nearly down. And now she's dead, so now it's uh, GB's uh, Jaden's time to go. What he's going to do anyway. Oh boy! Okay, so oh, we have big damage yeah. coming from other Jaden. And Cherry's now, is she going to. Oh yeah. So Jaden oh, is rain down to hate. Will Rain be able to do some damage? Oh no, it's a miss. <laughs> it is not accurate enough, I think uh, that's uh, over, uh, unfortunately, for Kason. Oh boy, that went fast. <laughs> Yeah, that was a fast match, and like I said, the silence was the uh, cherry on top to close it all out. But like I said, that losing either losing that hate there for the rain, I'm not sure if it was a losing hate, or if she was just barely out of range to be able to hit the rain, but was uh, in range to hit Jaden. But that was uh, definitely the nail in the coffin there for that match. As for me, I think that the key of the match was uh, that splashing damage coming from Jaden. I don't know for you. Yeah, I would have to agree, because I think that it killed Revelka, and she might have been in range to be able to do some damage on her next turn, because she was next in line. And it also put in some heavy damage onto the Jaden to allow uh, Sharice to come and clean up for her next attack. Oh, <laughs> that last damage even silenced the range, yeah. so he really yeah. had no hope at this point. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a rough ending. Uh, maybe Rain getting a little further ahead, but it's kind of hard to say, because he did have the Heart of Flutter TMR, which should have helped. Mm -hmm. um, but Rain kind of grouping up with Revelka and then close enough for uh, Summer Jaden to be also to be able to hit Jaden with the splash uh, shower there. That was uh, pretty difficult to see because Jaden definitely was tanky enough. He just was a little too close to his teammates in my opinion. All right, so let's jump into the next fight. So for match number two, we have Isvar versus Rem9. <clears throat> so on Isvar's side, I think that he's going to bring Bradley, Yerma and Murmur. Uh, I think that it's too difficult to play Glove against the Water Trap. For Bradley, uh, I think he's the answer to everything but Edward on uh, Rem9's side. Uh, for Rem9, uh, I think he's going to 
bring uh, Alphonse, Urel and Murmur. Uh, Ram 9 will bet uh, that Isvar will not go for Bradley. And uh, he will also bet that he won't bring Kefka. So <laughs> let's see if I'm right. Alright, so uh, I was totally wrong. Didn't guess right any of the units. Wow, so, this is an interesting uh, lineup coming out from Isvar. Uh, you do have a mixture of damage with the magical damage coming from Kefka and the physical from Yerma. Both of them are super heavy hitters. And you got a nice water theme going on, which is going to going to be very dangerous for that Kefka, so I'm excited to see how this plays out. So starting off, I see Kefka getting off his hate up buff on his teammates. Okay, I so wonder got... if um, the fire team was uh, predicted. I think so. Yeah, I think that has to be the reason. Now everyone has protect. Here comes what I expect to be a fast cast coming out of Murmur. Onto the Ferris. Very strong combo there. Yerma running back saying, well, wait a minute, I forgot to buff. Hold up. <laughs> going to give Valade a little bit of debuff resistance there and re restore her haste. Uh, Ferris getting off some more buffs. They should be approaching the conflict here, but Kefka gets off the re-raise buff, which is huge, making sure that that gets off in time. Come on, it's hard. Go forward, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> The Ice and Wind uh, buff won't really help out too much in this matchup, but the... Uh... There's a still Protect. Yeah, there's still the Protect, which is which is going to help immensely uh, against the rest of the team. So we have our first uh, Reflect of Damage. Oh, uh, still big damage on Ferris' side. And heal back over for uh, to heal nothing. <laughs> now we have Glaciera. Will she reach? No, she still can, but uh, it's a really big buff. I think it's 50% uh, more attack for one turn on you. Uh, Unfortunately, so Kurada on Yerma, so she's back to full. Fast cast on uh, Glaciera, so she has Ace. And I think that Murmur doesn't have Protect, I think I was wrong. Uh, so we have Hyper Drive, really low damage on uh, Ferris, but it's uh, expected. Uh, so we have Ferris or LB, so uh, what amount of damage we wish to be doing. So we have. Oh, so it was a lot of damage on that Yerma, but really. Not a lot to Kefka. He, man, he's really bulky. I don't know what he's made of, but he really tanked it well. So Kira, very low healing. Murmur next. Jamming Trust. Boy, what did this Kefka eat? Because it's really, really, really tanky. So we are now <laughs> launched. <laughs> so the Murmur is down. The first unit down, Ooh. so it's a 2v1 for Svar. Uh, next to Faris. She one shot the Valade. <laughs> wow. She uh, really had it out for Valade there. <laughs> <laughs> he's having it rough. So Kefka next, what is he channeling? So Glaciela is just chilling in the back. I think she forgot there's a fight. <laughs> Kefka hyperdrive again, still low damage. War Maiden Sprite from Glaciela. Uh, I think... <laughs> I mean, she, she, okay, so she's a Lancer, she's not a Dragoon, so I think she only has a 3-1. Uh, only one jump, and so that's why she's uh, late to coming into the fight. So Ferris, she's killing uh, uh, the clown, but Kefka uh, still have his re-raise. Uh, next is no, the spell was cancelled because he was dead. So Yerma next, is she going to one shot? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so big damage coming well, from Yerma was expected. And Kefka next was easy shelling. Will he have time? Yes, he has. So Yarper drive very very low damage on Glacia, who's was really great to tank magical damage. She's now killing Yerma, so it's a 1v1 oh with, a, with a very, very low Kefka. So he really has to one shot there. No, he doesn't have the damage, unfortunately. I think that uh, Glaciela is going to finish this uh, right now. Yep. So it was, uh, wow, uh, impressive display uh, coming from uh, Ram 9. I think that yeah. he, he expected the right team and <laughs> he was right too. <laughs> Yeah, bringing in the water units versus the Kefka was clutch, and it took a, took quite a while for Glacial to come into the fight, but when she did, boy did she put down the hurt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she was dealing massive damage and taking very little from the Kefka, so uh, it was definitely a good showing from Ram 9, and a good showing from Isvar too. He was able to put out some serious damage, to, even with the elemental disadvantage, uh, it was still putting out a good three to 4,000 against the Ferris, and Yerma damage capping the Murmur was that was amazing. Uh, for the key match, I think that it was uh, Kefka's tankiness. I mean, it, it was uh, really unbelievable. Uh, I saw some really bulky uh, Kefka, but this one, damn. Ow. <laughs> Just ow. 
<laughs> I want to know. <laughs> you deserve to know. <laughs> Reveal your secrets. <laughs> mm -hmm. For me, I got to say, uh, it's, it's, it's easy for me to say that Flash Yellow's final uh, coming into the match was probably the key for me. Just, you know, when they were already about half health, but Glass Yellow coming in, just coming in and cleaning house, dealing 6,000 to one and 6,000 to the other just to clean up things. I, I don't know. Like, I, I I never really get to see Glass Yellow played. And so, even if it might not have been the key of the match, it was my key of the match. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so they jump in the next confrontation. All right, so for match number three, we have Shadow versus Ice Art. So, Chizu, your predictions? So my predictions for this match, uh, for Shadow, I predicted Perrine, Rain, and Grace. Uh, main thing I wanted to get in there was Rain because uh, he's a good magic tank for a lot of Ice Heart's magic threats, and I feel like Perrine can lay down some serious damage when paired up with him, with Grace as a good support. Uh, for Ice Heart, I picked Halloween Lucia, Dark Fina, and Zazan. Um, I think Halloween Lucia is good for her physical barrier against a lot of Shadow's physical threats, and her paired up with Dark Fina makes for a very strong dark combo with Zazan as a good uh, sort of tank uh, for, for the combo. So we'll uh, see how close I got with that with that prediction. <laughs> so for Shadow side, we have Uni, Eliza, and Velis. So a strong missile comp with speed. On the Ice Heart uh, side, we have Miranda, <laughs> Alaya, and Zazan. Also a strong missile uh, team. So it's about the same. <laughs> so what yep. can we expect from this side? Uh, this fight? Uh, once again, like you said, uh, good missile comps, so we're expecting a good old missile showdown. Uh, importantly, from uh, from Iceheart's side, we have Zazan to kind of tank, hopefully tank a little bit of that missile damage to let Elia get in a couple more hits. Uh, Miranda here might be a good quicken uh, bot over here for Elia, which might also let her get in some more hits. Uh, whereas on Shadow's side, we have Velis for the healing. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> no quicken. Oh no! That's going no. to nullify it! <laughs> so on Zazan, uh, we have on the other side, so is it going to... No, he's not going to be in range, so he won't be able to uh, tank that damage. So Star Sweetness, so uh, Eliza is uh, stood. First damage, I think it's going to hit... Oh, maybe the Zazan! Yeah, it's hit the Zazan! So he's doing his job! Uh, is he still alive? Uh, okay, yes, I didn't so, see so the we can see. animation. <laughs> Reflex going for Alaya, I think that is really big. Alaya's going big. next, so is she going to hit with that big LB? Oh, so it's only a sharp shoot, but it's really enough to kill that uni. So right now we have uh, Miranda, I think she's going to be too uh, far away. And she's still trying. <laughs> so now uh, <laughs> Alaya will be able to cast her spell faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, do you have a burst that coming from Eliza on Alaya? So uh, the, the main, main DPS is down. It's going to be real difficult for uh, Ice Heart at this point. So uh, Eliza is going to finish uh, Alaya. So we have Zazan next. Is he going to... No, it's not close enough for Steel Art, unfortunately. So Miranda, I think that she's in range for uh, uh, Jamming Trust. No, she's... Okay, so she only went for the uh, Water Guard Dispeller. But there's no sleep on this one. Snow Link coming from the list, so she's still uh, she's going back. Uh, she's back to a full F. Grand Armor Berserk. Oh, that's enough to kill Miranda. So uh, unfortunately for uh, Ice Art, uh, the game is uh, over. Now uh, even the list can do damage and is going to end it. Wow, that was a high octane match oh, from yeah. the get go. <laughs> Basically from turn almost turn one, uh, we had the missile units kind of going at it. So. Uh, that was that was very exciting to see from both sides. I think that uh, Uni was really massive. Uh, the quick and nullify I think was the key of the match, honestly. Uh, because Alaya was about to go and maybe she could have killed that Alaya first, but uh, it didn't happen because of uh, Uni's arrows. Yeah, I would have to completely agree there. Uh, that quick and nullify not only uh, wasted a turn for Miranda, but we saw from Iceheart's side that that Aliyah definitely had the damage. She was able to do almost 10,000 damage to Uni, one-shotting him. 
Uh, but and I have no doubt that she would have been able to put on some serious damage to the enemy uh, Eliza as well, if not one-shotting her too. So I think taking out that quicken from the equation and the subsequent haste that Miranda tried to do, um, I think that was massive. So yeah, I, I think that Yumi's arrow fall was the key of the match for me as well. So I think at this point we can guess that it really was a missile map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Alright, so we have match number 4 right here, so we have Jesus against Itaman PR, so is it your prediction? Alright, so for Jesus LBL, I, man, I feel really strongly that he could definitely bring the Barts and Uni combo again. Um, just because, especially we saw, since we saw from the last matches, that this is definitely a really good missile map. But, for my prediction, I'm going to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to go with Sephiroth Whisper Murmur. It's a really solid team, I really think that just Sephiroth and Whisper just are a very strong team to be reckoned with, and Murmur being able to give haste to both is just incredibly strong. Uh, that can that team can really take on much of anything. And then from Itoman PR side, I went with something a little spicy. I went with Flagler, Glaciella, Victoria, and Sergius for an all spear comp. I think the elements line up pretty well with Glaciella not really having not having any ice threats, and. Uh, just the, in Victoria only having Raldor as a fire threat, I think this would be, and with the height differences on this map too, I think the like a dragon type units are very good at being able to navigate that. So I'm predicting the spear comp from Itaman PR. Let's see if you're right. All right, so on Itaman's side, we have King Mom, Flag Glaciella, and Surges. On Yizu's side, we have Uni, Warrior of Light, and Bards. So we've seen from the last two matches missile is super strong so Bart's uni is going to be a very hard team to reckon with so uh definitely Ito man's got his work cut out for him in this team comp but mont is crucially separated from the other two spear units so i think that he might be able to uh take a lot of the damage hopefully tank it up pretty well and allow his spear units to kind of hit the flank and be able to reach them but jesus's team is paired up on the opposite side of the map so it might be a little bit harder for the spear units to really get there and to do their job. Um, Keen Blade coming out from both sides. Uh, Warrior of Lights uh, coming out here now for Jesus LBLs. Uh, meaning Bart should be able to get his uh, follow-up proc here unless he's in range. Okay, he gets it off right now. So this is going to be That's good. one of the main keys for Jesus LBLs team. So let's see how the conflict should start here soon. But Uni is crucially going to get an attack here, and let's see what this does to Rain, or to King Mont, I mean. Oh, oh I well, can't see the damage because of the, first the damage. <laughs> <laughs> But I can see it on the left side. It looks like it took about half of his health. Oh, that's so, massive, that, yeah. So will pretty... King Mont be able to uh, LB right at this moment? So uh, we're excited about this. Oh, no, he's not in range, so he's only moving forward. So Bards 2 uh, doesn't... Uh, activate any skill, so we have a rotation of the camera right there. So Flag Glaciella going next, is she going? No, she's still on a range too. Uni, she, pro she probably has the range of course. Not a lot of damage, but the follow-up is kind of good, but uh, unfortunately King Mons is going back to full F at this moment. Oh, okay, so the uh, third follow-up uh, did a lot of damage, but he's out of follow-up at this point. So King Mons, okay, so the famous LB is going. Up, so let's see uh, how many units are preserved. Okay, only Warrior of Light. So uh, he escaped uh, the, the worst uh, scenario possible. Big damage coming from Bards. Oh, so King Mon is down. So Glaciella will have the, the burden to kill everyone at this point. Otherwise, Sergis will have to do a lot of damage on his own. So Sergis still searching for his uh, foe, <laughs> unfortunately. So, uh, you need little damage of uh, Glaciella, of course, it's expected. Uh, Warrior of Light that is healing more than he's receiving at this point. Oh, big damage coming from this Glassy, so I think that uh, Warrior of Light is weak to Curse, if I remember correctly, right? Yes, that's completely correct. And that's actually one of the reasons why I didn't think he would bring the Warrior of Light, but oh my gosh, here comes the damage onto the Uni and they are down. At this point, it was expected, at least. <laughs> so Warrior, <laughs> Warrior of Light, Berserk, so we could uh, attack uh, Glaciella. Glaciella, another big attack, so 10k on uh, Warrior of Light. Next is Bart, what level damage does he have? 
He is one shotting that surges. Uh, I think it was a big chunk of ill back. Warrior Flight, Classic Attack. Glassy is not impressed, it was not a lot of damage. His Berserk has ended, as is life. Right. <laughs> Bard's coming next, what the level of damage can do to Glacilla. Let's see, so it's his uh, LB coming from the Bard's. Okay, so a lot of damage. So Glacilla really has to do a ton right here, or she's done. So let's see. Spirit seeing not a lot of damage, unfortunately for Timon, I think it's uh, Jesus' win on this uh, this time. Yeah. <laughs> that was the last hit, man. Basic what attack did the job. Oh, what a <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, I honestly didn't expect it to be as competitive as it was. You know, once I saw the Bart's uni combo come out, I was like, oh, that's going to be hard for a bunch of physical, you know, melee range units to really get in range to deal damage, but no, it came down really close towards the end there. Yeah, I think that the key of the match was Kingman not applying Berserk on uh, the whole team, only Warrior Flight. Yeah, I mean, that definitely would have been a huge turning point if he was able to apply that Berserk. Um, I would want to say that the key of the match for me would have... Oh man, it would probably would have been just... Bart's overall damage, being able to not only take, I mean, I, mean, I guess Bart's in general, <laughs> like, can I just use a unit as the key of the match? Because he not only tanked Glaciella's hit incredibly well, but was able to do strong damage off the follow-ups, and, you know, you saw the cap damage of 14,000 against the Surges, so he, he was basically a team all to his own, so he, he really did a, a great job this whole match. Well, uh, good job, Jesus. Uh, I think you have a pretty disgusting team. You have won two match uh, with it uh, in a row. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations on, the, on your win. Yeah, congrats. All right, so we just wanted to add something. Uh, we checked, and uh, Bart has 50% uh, resistance to Berserk. So, I think the chances to avoiding it uh, was pretty high. So, uh, my key of the match was stupid. So I, we only, <laughs> <laughs> we only uh, wanted to add this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very surprised that Bart didn't get affected. I like he has to have some berserk resistance there between like a trust stone or, or Esper or something. And I looked at his unit page and like there's where it is. So that makes a lot more sense. Good call, it, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for the fifth and last match of the enthusiast division, we have Chizé against Stan Rooster. So, on Cheese's side, I think that he's going to bring Elena, Garval, and Zazen because of the elemental advantage and also because he's a coward. <laughs> that, that team is. Ac <laughs> I think that this team is accurate enough to deal with evasion and also uh, because uh, Garval is super cool. And uh, on the Sand Rooster side, I think that he's going to bring Olet, Agrias, and Salma. Uh, I think that he'll expect Glove and will want to Salma to tank that team. Also, uh, Agrias could uh, do as a diversion and apply status effect. So let's see if I'm right. But before, Sand Rooster has made a little clip for us. Uh, so let's see uh, what is it. He mentioned this. I'm excited to see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, tactics, let's go. <laughs> he dared to. <laughs> uh, love it. I never get tired of this opening every time I see it. Oh my god! <laughs> 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 oh my god, Cyrus. <laughs> this is gold.
<laughs> so true. That's about right. Yep. <laughs> the leader's a beast of a unit. Oh man. <laughs> I'm like crying over here. <laughs> oh man, it's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold. That's gold. <laughs> Oh, man. Now but, I wish. Now I wish we had team names. I want you to change my name to the Chiseans. <laughs> but it it didn't do this for no reason. There's a logic to it because, <laughs> of course, he's bringing the all FFT comp, and on Chise's side, he went for Miranda, Duan, and Murmur. So let's see how, how this ends. <laughs> I couldn't resist a, a chance to do the Red Mage face off. So I kind of threw everything else out the window and just chose Red Mage Comp just so I could duel him. <laughs> and I'm so glad to see the Fall Fantasy Tactics Comp. That's my favorite game. I'm excited to see how this plays out. So, yeah, that's uh, here comes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here comes the Keen Blade coming out from Agrius, getting his team off to a quick and early start. Uh, Miranda coming out with the Courage for a little bit of survivability there, though a lot of his units can remove Courage, so that is a bit tricky on my side. Uh, Dwayne coming in with the King Blade once again, trying to get some early buffs off quickly. Uh, speaking of quickly, Murmur's over there channeling a fast cast. Uh, try and get some haste up on my units. Uh, Agrius over there using the uh, Beach Guard. Uh, but that was an accident, uh, no strike units, but uh, overall I think that his team is going to be pretty bulky against mine right here. So we have first, first damage, Ma Miranda and G Gagrius, so uh, it was uh, 4k, it's not so bad at this point. So Murmur, is she going to reapply haste? Probably. Oh, stun I guess, so we have damage. Uh, okay, so Agrius is nearly down. So Orlando, is he able to reach? Yes, on Miranda. Oh, he kills her in one go because he have the uh, courage removal. So Duan going next, is he going to kill that Agrius? Yes, and uh, also uh, I think he regained some HP, but the, he was already full, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Delta going next, is going for LB, LB, so he's going to silence with him, with it. Yes, so Murmur will not be able to cast any spell for uh, the next three turns. Dwayne com coming next, is <laughs> it's better be good. Oh, disable <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> on the Delita, so it was the best scenario possible for him. So, uh, what level damage can Arnendo do? A lot of damage. So, uh, next uh, Dwayne turn is really have to be determined. Oh, he left him. Oh, unfortunately. Oh, poor Cheezer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sealed the deal for me right there. Uh, there's uh, very little a silenced murmur can do at this point, but she's going to try her best. <laughs> basic attacks. <laughs> and she's dead. <laughs> yep, <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> like Kisan is always saying, that's all she wrote. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh yep. boy, yeah. uh, uh, honestly, yeah, it was a rough match. congrats, congrats uh, San Rooster for uh, bringing up that team and for winning with it. Uh, it was a great display of power also. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he uh, definitely showed who the uh, true Red Mage user is in this matchup. Not only that, but flexing on me with the Final Fantasy Tactics units, which I respect. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a super rough matchup and... Uh, uh, in terms of just how well his team was able to do. Uh, the courage removal was, was painful. And uh, like I said, overall, just amazing match from San Rooster. And uh, it, was, it was just great getting to talk with him and to be able to have that match with him as well. I think that the key of the match was the introduction video gave him <laughs> enough uh, courage to uh, go forward. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. That that was definitely the uh, key of the match right there. It uh, even though it happened after the match, it uh, broke my spirit enough that it uh, <laughs> retroactively applied to the actual match. So uh, yes, yeah, that's my my units weren't able to deal as much damage, and uh, I think that's what caused uh, my murmur to get silenced. So yeah, that that had to be it. <laughs> Congratulations, Sandroster, and uh, honestly, a great video.
we loved it a lot. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> All right, so it was a really good start uh, from the Enthusiast Division. Uh, so uh, congrats to Itaman, Sam Rooster, Jesus, Shadow and GB79 for the win. So here's the current standings. Let's see how the uh, Blind Division do. All right, so on Itaman's side, we have Kingman, Glaciela, and that dude. Oh, <laughs> Sergius, I, I got... Oh, oh that's Sergius, yeah. <laughs>